Hey guys, so this is just a new recording I'm doing to show the process of editing multiple frames, because what I saw in uh, my last two recordings was for some reason my recording software wasn't pick picking up on when I open certain little windows, like the properties and things which don't really matter too too much, but uh, I also noticed when I showed editing multiple frames that it wasn't recording my timeline, and that's a really integral piece of showing you uh, what I'm about to do. So on your timeline you have different tools you can kind of use to um, manipulate your little piece that you have here. So what I have in terms of I'm about to show you is this is the loop that'll just play the animation and it plays over and over again this kind of you know selected area so here we can see he's walking goes a little faster and starts flying but if I just wanted to show the flying bit I would have it loop from here right so that setup of what you have for um, this loop tool that you can kind of move around is very similar to the edit multiple frames tool which Perhaps we can we can't really zoom in on the timeline unfortunately and these buttons are rather small but if you look you see you have your other tools such as onion skinning which show kind of the movement of your frames throughout the process going back as far as you need and then um, right down from there you have this tool um, oh let me turn onion skinning off for that it's probably helpful. So this tool, as you can see, it shows all the frames. And what it actually does is it lets you select um, all your kind of necessary frames that you would like to or you would like to edit. So here we're selecting all the frames on all the layers except for this layer, which I'm going to show you why that's not being selected in a minute. So say you want to change the size of the thing. Unfortunately, the transform window doesn't show, but you do command T, you get a little transform window, and there are these little applicators that let you adjust the scale. That's pretty basic stuff. So here I'm adjusting the scale so that it's 50% of what it was, and as you can see, that made everything a lot smaller which is, that's what I attempted to do, and you take that frame off, it's back to the normal animation, except everything's smaller, so it lets you edit multiple frames at once. And you can use that to adjust the size, um, anything in the transform menu you can really do with this tool, as well as the possibility of kind of coloring different things, so say, you know, let's put that back you know, kind of where it was with the size, so you can see a bit more clearly what I would like to do. Alright, so we have our Mantis, and now he's back to like a pretty normal size. As you can see, his wings are pink. Um, they aren't normally that color in most mantises, but it was the color that I used to kind of display um, certain changes um, that you can also do with this tool. So here we've kind of got the selection tool in our timeline of editing multiple keyframes, which is right here, this button that's around all our frames that have the wings. So now all the wings are selected, and say, you know, I want it to not be necessarily that pink color, but, you know, we could make it blue or purple or whatever. Let's do kind of, you know, kind of this blue color, and then I have them a bit transparent because they are wings. You can affect transparency by adjusting the alpha so it's a little transparent, and then just remove that tool and you have the nice animation. It's still preserved, it's still doing everything it needs to do, just the size is different as well as you can use this tool to recolor things pretty easily. And another way I demonstrated this comes in handy with the project is I just have this little 
funky layer that's like a couple frames. It's just this oval moving around. It's pretty simple. But here I have, you know, line art that was done with this nice, uh, just the vector kind of line tool here. And the, that's a shape that I then filled in using just, you know, the paint bucket and it's kind of the screen color and it's moving around. So if you want to just recolor those frames, uh, it comes in handy with a lot of the assets because a lot of the assets will be these similar closed shapes and sometimes you might need to recolor them based on what the programmer wants or what's going on or what have you. So we just shrink that down and then just select all the um, necessary frames on this layer. Um, thing about this tool is getting the timeline to work exactly how you want and select everything is a bit of a pain, but if it doesn't select everything, you can then just use the selection tool. And then we can use it to fill it, I guess, that transparent blue or whatever that we just had. So now you can see it's filled that color. And uh, even if something is not filled, which I'm going to show you, you know, right here, so you have all these shapes and they're just not filled in anymore, they're just empty. Doing the um, fill tool when you have it on the editing multiple frames isn't necessarily going to let you fill them all at once uh, if there's no previous color in them, because when the th everything in the same frame is selected, it does select the color all the time as well, so that just makes it easier to recolor, but if it's not colored at all and it's just empty, you can color it in this mode, but it won't color in that same way I just demonstrated with um, when something's already colored. So it's a bit more easier for recoloring as opposed to coloring. However, if you just are coloring things like assets, this could be a little helpful, but really when you're doing, like, say you want to color the walk animation and the shirt, pants, skin, etc. are going to be, like, different colors, it's going to be showing all the frames at once, and coloring things in this mode might be a bit chaotic, but it is good to do certain color edits as well as uh, shaping things up or down or what have you to where they need to be. So I hope that was helpful because uh, using this tool is really, really good. It can save a lot of time, a lot of frustration.